in a deadly force encounter, stopping a threat might mean pulling the trigger a lot more than you think it will. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Indianapolis, Indiana. We are gonna see here a long-standing neighbor feud that boils over into a gunfight. That's gonna teach us some important lessons about the legal use of deadly force. We're also gonna learn about stopping the threat reliably and the incredible resilience of the human body. The men in this video have a long-standing feud. Go read the news stories on my website. They've interacted over a dozen times and had a lot of problems. And they're having problems over this fence interchange here. So this guy's going over and calling him all kinds of dirty names and stuff. If you go watch the original, then uh, he gets on his mower. Now the guy on this side of the fence is gonna go and see what he's done, and it's all gonna go south in a minute. So let's listen in on the gunfight as it happens, and then we'll come back and start to assess and learn some lessons. If you were counting, that was 16 total gunshots. And now you think, gosh, man, this guy's got to be completely out of the fight. 16 gunshots have gone off. But what you're going to see is I think our, our defender here has gotten completely out of the danger zone. And this guy who was shot in the chest four times gets up and walks off. They actually, the paramedics found him in his kitchen and he is currently in critical condition last I checked. Let's go back and learn some lessons on this one. As always, eight lessons on our website. And, and you know, the thing that I want to talk, start talking about here is these escalating verbal conflicts. Very difficult here, but you got to watch your ego and you got to try to just be at peace with the people as possibly as much as you can. Because this guy has a gun on him that the, the lady who's in whose house he lives says she, he actually took from her and didn't have her permission to have. Now you ask, did this guy really need to come into a gunfight? Well, it starts going south when this guy has messed with the fence and called him names and whatever, and our defender is coming over to see what he's done and to undo it. So this is a long simmering feud. You know, you, you, any chance you can de-escalate because what happens here, you see, you can see right now that right through the fence we can see that this guy on the, the mower has drawn a gun. He's gotten a gun out of his pocket and brandished it. Now, where I live in Arizona, we call that aggravated assault. That right there, brandishing a firearm, assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated assault, depending on your jurisdiction, this guy's just threatened deadly force against you. And our defender can certainly fear for his life there. And he notices right here, he sees finally, oh my gosh, that guy has a gun on him. Now, I've been paying some attention to this, really kind of worked through the video very carefully. And one of the things that you can see here is from the time that he sees what's going on, you can see right here in the video that the guy on the, on the mower, his arm is down. He's got his arm down at his side and our defender is gonna get his gun up. And you can see that the, the guy on the mower, his arm comes up as well. And that first shot is so close. You can just see his gun here. I think he beat him by 0 0.1, 0 0.2. It was very, very close. Now, that first shot, as you can see, does something to him. We call that the fibs factor, right? Fudge, I've been shot. So he puts one in him, puts a second one in him right there. And you can see the guy starting to respond to that. That's why we say you wanna be first. The first person to put shots on target generally wins a deadly force encounter. So now more shots start coming. Why? Because the threat is still up. Now our, our good guy here finally stops shooting and he recognizes, okay, wait a minute, I have to assess. Those first nine shots that he took, they came very, very quickly. He shot very fast to try to see over his sights and end the threat. Now you gotta reassess and say, is there still a threat around? but you gotta do so in smart ways. Don't put yourself back in the danger zone. What our, our good guy decides to do here is go up and check and he has to take another shot here, decides to retreat. We jokingly you know, called that the tactical hokey pokey. Here you go, you know, put your whole self in, you take your whole self out. Instead, just take your whole self out. Get out of that danger zone as fast as you can. Now, as we continue on here, I think from listening to the other shots, I think these six shots, if you watch the video, actually come from the guy on the mower that he's just kind of shooting randomly. The reports are different. I'm not positive on that, but that's a good reason to get out of the danger zone if indeed those shots are his. And finally, we want to recognize that even when a, sh uh, a suspect is down, they may not be completely out. The human body is remarkably resilient and you can, the threats can reemerge. So if you're not a law enforcement officer, as soon as you get that threat down, get out of the danger zone because if this guy had more rounds on him, he could continue to be a threat. Thankfully, our good guy got himself out of the danger zone, got away from there, so he wasn't a threat. So let's learn here about de-escalation, about being first to put shots on target, about responding effectively to deadly force encounters, and about getting out of the danger zone to cover our ASP. <laughs> 